السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته so الحمد لله there's been um, two things I really wanted to share because they come up often uh, with you know people I get to speak with سبحانه I think it's a uh, it's a correction that needs to be made in most of our understanding of who we are uh, because I have noticed that it's a uh, mistake that leads to many good people not fulfilling uh, the the completeness of their goodness or it's a reason they become very weak and that's a reason why a lot of evil and darkness and badness uh, flourishes in the world um, and that is the understanding of being worthy. A lot of people, when Allah tries to bless them with goodness, with khair, in the dunya and in the akhira, right? Uh, in the akhira, khair in the akhira is to have your status increased, to have your hal, your maqam increased. And what I mean by that is your uh, status increased in characteristics that God is pleased with. Uh, the easiest example is taqwa if your maqam is being increased in taqwa you become more and more muttaqi more and more aware of the divine presence everywhere uh, that's some it's a great uh, uh, a gift and honor that god is bestowing upon you and if allah gives you in the dunya uh, perhaps the ability to do uh, more good deeds uh, more charity look after more people is giving you a very high status or a position uh, and you feel oh you don't deserve this you're not qualified you're not accomplished enough but you don't realize that if you would take that gift you can perhaps do a lot of good with it a lot of times i've heard good people saying i'm not worthy and that is a um, that feeling of worthiness uh, comes from a wrong understanding of uh, uh, how creation is and who the creator is so uh, a mistaken notion of existence a mistaken notion of reality because in the true state of affairs in the, there is no such thing as being worthy there is only uh, choice not your choice God's choice right if God chooses you he has then so deemed you worthy and therefore that is an honor and a great gift something we don't take lightly and we should uh, humbly and honorably and graciously and with dignity step into that not relying on ourselves but relying on Allah to carry us through give us success in that role that's the key thing if you step into all of that and you take that with self-reliance then you are opening the door to egoism uh, all the ugly things uh, hubris uh, arrogance uh, having a big ego uh, mishandling your power and your position hurting people through your new status and this is why a lot of good people feel afraid to take on high positions because they think they will fall into these things though they may not articulate it in such a clear way in their heart that's what they mean when they say i'm not worthy they think oh i'm going to mess it up i'm going to do something bad or i'm going to become a bad person La. so those things happen when you go into it with self-reliance now when you have the correct understanding of who is really in charge of everything on earth and who is really the mover and the shaker to use a modern phrase right what the real power is that you are just a, a vehicle through which divine power and divine will is manifested then that notion of i'm not worthy it's it's non-existent it's a I think what they say a moot point it's not that it is um 
this is the way it is meant to be i will do my best to honor it let me so so don't ever let that thought or notion stop you this these are shayatini tricks that will waylay you from you achieving your true purpose on earth because rest assured it is a haqiqa a reality a haq a truth that nobody can dispute that you have been created out of love pure love divine love and the one who created you does not do anything uh, without meaning or purpose this is not allah's way allah is not wasteful because allah says in the quran that la uh, la yuhibbuna israf i think if i'm not mistaken uh, israf is one of the opposite the seven opposite words to the seven words allah loves there are seven opposites some sometimes eight depending on how you look at the grammar of the arabic israf is one of them allah says la yuhibbuna so i do not love so when he says that subhanallah as much as you have to pay attention to the seven words allah loves you have to pay uh, equal attention to the seven words allah hates so allah says i hate israf extravagance wastefulness meaning doing things without a purpose when you spend your time when you do anything in life Huh? Don't do it without a purpose. And always question what your purpose is. If you are going to get a degree, what is the purpose of my degree? If you are looking for a job, what is the purpose of that? Uh, even in the way you eat, you exercise, you dress. Subhanallah, don't ever be meaningless, huh? so allah himself says in the quran he does not love this so then how can you think that he would make you without purpose la you have been created out of divine love to fill, fulfill a divine plan and you are a means of executing that plan and if you are in concordance with the divine um, the divine qadr the divine will Uh, you will find complete harmony in your life and in your heart no matter what happens to you outside because you have come into the state of taslim taslim means you are in harmony with the divine and the divine creation so you are working with the clouds the wind the trees the earth the animals the birds and this is why we say everything in creation will be a signpost for you and will be a help for you and will be a means to guide you so that you execute the purpose of your creation um everything in creation will be this except for that creation that has free choice so the only creation with free choice is the jinn and the insan the human being and the jinn so the the jinn we won't talk about the human beings who thankfully very very human beings nowadays know how to deal with the jinn and even the ones who do they should be extremely careful and conscious of what they are doing because that that can lead to a lot of trouble the human beings uh, because they have free choice they can choose to be in concordance or discordance so therefore <laughs> they will not be as helpful to you as the wind the mountains and the ocean and the trees because these creation the creation without free choice the ones i mentioned the the plants even even inanimate objects right they are in a constant state of tasbih glorification of allah they are in complete dhikr all the time so that means that equates to being in taslim that equates to fulfilling their divine plan that equates to um uh they are being in harmony with the divine right so when you are with them it helps you also to be in harmony now subhanallah if you can find a human being who is in complete taslim in complete harmony with the divine plan that person will be like a mountain in your life like an ocean 
so strong. It will guide you, help you, shelter you. It's hard to find people like that these days. This is why sometimes it's, it's more accessible to find this cho creation without choice that will help you on your way. So coming back to how I started, this notion of worthiness that should not ever enter your thought process, right? So this is a very common thing in modern people. And it's very interesting, the people who do evil in the world, the tyrants and the oppressors and the cheaters and the liars and mostly people in power, dictators, so forth, they never think of, am I worthy of this? It doesn't even enter their psyche, they just go on doing what they want to. It's the good people, the oppressed, the weak, the innocent, who get into this confusing darkness in their brains that limits them from achieving their divine purpose. So don't let the shayatil fool you like that. That's a satanic trick. Uh, the satanic tricks are not uh, scary. They are cunning, deceptive. And, uh, and it's, it's unfortunately spread because of a wrong understanding or a... Uh, incomplete understanding of uh, the true reality of creation and existence right and uh, subhanallah these are these uh, meanings are found very clearly in surat shams uh, where allah says wa shamsi wa duhaha wa qamari idha talaha wa nahari idha jallaha wa layli idha yaqshaha and then the example is given later in the surah of the people of um, Thamud. We should learn about our history huh? and who these people of Thamud are. We'll then and have a concrete example in front of you as to how what happens if you don't pay attention to these it's loving teaching really that your Lord is giving you so Allah says in this Quran he swears uh, by the shams the sun and the brilliant day this is how I am today subhanallah sun and brilliant blue sky alhamdulillah by the moon as it follows it the daytime and its majesty and how the night covers that up. He swears by this. By the expanse of the great heavens. Looking at the... Subhanallah, I just looked up. And I see an eagle behind me. Allahu Akbar. These are Allah's signs. Allahu Akbar. And... والأرض وما تهاها By the earth and its laying out. ونفسي وما سواها And Allah swears by the nafs. The nafs is a, is a deep reality. In Surah Nisa, Allah begins uh, by explaining how He created everything from nafsi wahida, one, one nafs. He didn't say everything from one ruh, one nafs. So all things are created from one nafs. So what is this nafs? Huh? So I sometimes translate it as a consciousness, a reality, an entity. We could call it a consciousness. So Allah swears by that, وَمَا سَوَّاهَا And how it is fashioned. So how has the nafs been fashioned that we don't know, that Allah knows. And is he talking about your nafs, my nafs, or this entirety of the nafs? Allah Ta'ala alam. فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And how it is inspired, or its fu'ad, its deep inner, inner state, the inner... Uh, the core of that consciousness knows what is in discordance and what is in concordance, right? So if you think of this nafs as a self, a person, your innermost state is inspired by a divine teaching that distinguishes correctness from falsehood. So here falsehood is to be wavered, to tend towards mischief, and correctness is to have taqwa, 
to come into consciousness of the divine. When you are in consciousness of the divine, you automatically enter harmony with the rest of creation that is in consciousness with the divine and obviously with the divine himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And Allah then says, Qad aflaha man zakaha. Verily, uh, the one who reaches falah, sort of sweet satisfaction of success, is the one who purifies it. So purifies what? One's nafs. Why purify? If your nafs is pure, it's easy for you to uh, tune in and be harmonious with the rest of creation. Qad khaba man And verily, um, how do you say Destruction, <laughs> destruction, destroyed is the one, ruined is the one who dirties it, huh? the opposite of purifies it. So this is the thing, when you have free choice, it's up to you whether you are going to keep your nafs pure or the opposite. And if you keep it pure, you enter the state of uh, falah. And if you do not, you enter the state of uh, you have destroyed yourself. You don't blame God, blame yourself. Because Allah is saying here, He swears by all this magnificent creation before. Because what is He saying? Every single thing is telling you, helping you, reminding you, correcting your path, realigning you, recalibrating you. You, if you're, you know, if you're moving, and I don't know if any of you are in the, in the nautical thing, you're moving the ship and the currents turn the the steering of the ship. So you have to always do fine tune adjustments to bring it back on course, right? So you have to keep your hands on that steering wheel. When you drive, you do the same thing. It's not as difficult as a ship with all the currents of the ocean, but it's, life is like that. Your life on Earth is like a ship going through this ocean of time and things happen and you can go of course easily so you have to keep steering and everything in creation is helping you steer so listen to that how can you listen if you're preoccupied with other things all the signs are in concordance I look up and now there are beautiful white birds in the sky I must learn to move this around and show you subhanallah but I don't need to you will if you pay attention you will have this happen to you in your life too or always all around you but learn learn and train yourself to be in that discipline of constantly tuning in and this is why to achieve these states you need your dhikr Right? Dhikr is what will open it. Because everything in creation is already in dhikr. This is why the Quran emphasizes dhikr over and over and over again. In the modern Muslims, we are in a state, if we can manage a five times prayer, manage Ramadan and zakah, and maybe manage hajj, we are relieved. <laughs> so relieved that we've at least done that. So you can imagine how poor our state is. Because that is your foundation, that's your basic, 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 basic. That's like kindergarten level. Uh, and if our, our life was as pure as children in kindergarten, you know, a safe place, no problems, uh, and we could be like children in kindergarten, subhanAllah, that's enough. But we all know that's not the way it is, especially those of us who are adults have to deal with this world, this modern world, postmodern world, where everything is uh, pulling pulling us towards non-belief and uh, therefore breaking our hearts and our souls. There's so much mental illness nowadays, so much discordance inside, so much agitation, so much anxiety, so much a lack of peace, so much a lack of contentment. If you are in concordance, you are happy in that moment. Tomorrow you leave it to Allah's hands. Don't worry about it. Yesterday is in the past. Don't grieve over it. It's, it's done. If your book has been written and sent up to heaven with good deeds for yesterday, Alhamdulillah. Right? Make sure you have the same thing happen tonight when your book is sent up. Because every day the angels will send up your daily record. So, we are in a very, very poor state. And these words... You know, I, I, I wanted to share. 
So you can rectify this. Don't let the shaitan trick you and think you're not worthy to rectify it. Start learning. Spend your time well. Don't waste a moment of any day. Right? Don't don't do anything wasteful or extravagant without thought, without purpose. So may Allah help you to fulfill your divine plan. If you can fulfill the the word kun be something Allah created you with on earth, you will have so much sweetness in your life. And you will return to Allah with so much satisfaction, accomplishment. I did it, my Lord. SubhanAllah. Huh? So may Allah help you to attain that. Well, it cannot be done without God's uh, grace upon you. And you must invite Allah's grace upon you. A lot of us, Allah's grace has been flowing into our lives ceaselessly from the time we attained puberty, and certainly before that, but more so from puberty because then we need more help. But we have been turning our backs or closing the door or not caring to listen. That's very hurtful. So don't do that. Start paying attention to every little sign that Allah will send to you, the universe will send to you. It's all from Allah. Because Allah is everywhere and in everything. There is no creation that is devoid of the Creator. Okay? So that's the main thing. Don't ever think you're not worthy. There is no such concept in our cosmology. There is no concept of worthiness. There is a concept of choosing. Meaning, Allah will choose certain people for certain things. This is the concept of saying kun fayakun. Be and it is. So Allah chooses. Be a doctor, you will be. Be a teacher, you will be. Be a mother, you will be. Uh, you have to align yourself with that word. Right? So don't let this I am not worthy nonsense come into your thoughts. And also remember what the Surat Sham says. The only scale of the scale that matters is the scale of righteousness that is how you should uh, uh, judge yourself you know not that oh i've lived so many years on earth i haven't achieved anything i don't have a big house i'm not rich I, my neighbor has wonderful children i don't Allah. these things have no uh, inherent reality in God's sight. It's all part of dunya. Dunya is fading. But has reality in God's sight is purity. Allah says, Qadafliha man zakkaha. So that's righteousness. How pure are you? If you are a pure human being, you will be a, a, a person of light. And your light will en illuminate everyone around you. And bring great joy to this world. Joy of truth. To all of creation, the fish will make dua for you, and the trees will sing your praises. Huh? They'll thank the creation, will thank Allah for making you. That matters. So, the only scale that matters is righteousness. That is what the Quran teaches us. Always assess yourself versus the people of taqwa. The people of taqwa. Not the rulers, not the politicians, not the presidents, not the scientists, not the neurosurgeons, huh? not even great. Uh, 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 I mean, subhanAllah, people of light will be fabulous parents and so forth. But that's not the way you should assess yourself. Oh, there, she's a mother, I'm not allowed. Uh, some parents can be very cruel to their children. So assess yourself. The only scale that you should uh, uh, gauge yourself versus is the scale of righteousness. How much good do you do? How much good fills your heart? How much light do you have inside? If you low on your light, go do some work to attain a higher degree of noor in your heart. But how do you do that? Start your dhikr. Start the tasbih of Allah. 
as I keep saying, that is the opening, the key to everything. That's the fat. That is how we begin. Well, I reward you and guide you again, subhanAllah, on a sunny day after a week of rain. Allah has blessed me to come outside, take advantage of the sunshine, and make this message for you. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ta'ala wa barakatuh.